The African grey is a species of parrot characterized by distinctive scallop grey plumage. It is native to a wide swath of Africa, from offshore islands in the Atlantic Ocean, including Sao Tome and Principe, to eastern Côte d'Ivoire, through Nigeria, Cameroon, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania. There are two separate known species of African grey, the Congo and the Timna. Though the Timna were once deemed a subspecies of the Congo African Grey, Cetacus erythacus, they are now recognized since 2012 as a fully separate species known as Cetacus Timna by the BirdLife International Group on the basis of the genetics, morphology, plumage, and vocal differences. However, there is technically a third species called Cetacus e princeps, which is seldomly seen but can be found on the islands of Principe and Fernando Po in the Gulf of Guinea. This bird is slightly darker than the Congo African Grey. The Timna is found in western parts of the Upper Guinean forest, bordering savannas in West Africa, Sierra Leone, Southern Mali and the Ivory Coast. The Congo African Grey are larger than the Timna, up to 14 inches tall and weigh approximately 1 pound or 400 grams, while the Timna reach about 10 inches tall and weigh around 6 ounces less. They both have large white areas of tiny feathers extending from behind the eyes to the beak like a white mask. The Timna has a beige upper beak, while the Congo has a solid black beak. The tail feathers of the Congo are bright red. In comparison, the Timna has dark maroon tail feathers. As a result of selective breeding of mutations in captivity, some rare African grey parrots can even have white tails or be completely reddish pink in color. As for nutrition, the African grey is partly a ground feeder. In the wild, it feeds on fruits, nuts, seeds, flowers, tree bark, and even insects and snails. In captivity, it eats bird pellets, which are a special formula designed to give birds the most nutrients in every bite while preventing selective eating. The grey also eats nuts, seeds, lots of fruits and vegetables. In all, not so different from its diet in the wild. African grey are monogamous birds that nest in tree trunks. They can lay three to five eggs in a clutch while they incubate for 30 days. Both parents raise their chicks, feeding them until they are 12 weeks old, after which the chicks leave the nest as fully grown birds. The predators of the African grey are not numerous, but they are quite fierce. Those include turkey vultures and monkeys, which target the young as food. However, the biggest threat to this otherwise successful species population is mankind. Between 1994 and 2003, nearly 360,000 African grey parrots were traded on the international market, which represented 21% of their population being harvested every year back then. The fact that greys are so easy to catch by hunters does not help their situation. One can literally throw nets at them while their flocks are feeding on the rainforest ground. The mortality rates faced by the captured birds back then ranged from 60 to 66% before they reached market. Apart from trading, which is a lucrative business as the bird sells for around 2,000 US dollars in western pet shops, the African grey is also hunted for its meat. The meat is used in some traditional medicines, namely in China, for its alleged properties. Habitat loss paired to extensive trading and hunting has put the African grey on the endangered species list as its population is now believed to be undergoing a rapid decline. Since 2016, however, the Convention on the International Trade of Endangered Fauna and Flora has given the highest level of protection to the African grey, banning any global and domestic trade of wild-caught individuals. Those greys now being legally traded in and outside Africa are thus supposed to have been bred from couples already in captivity by breeders approved by CITES. African grey parrots are prized birds as pets for their unique ability to mimic human speech nearly perfectly. They also mimic a variety of ambient noises such as electronic appliances, phones, and other animals like dogs and cats. They can learn hundreds of words in their lifetime, which they let out in no particular order or in well-structured phrases. They are highly intelligent birds that have been recently found to be able to learn number sequences associate human voices with human faces, and differentiate yes. between objects, colors, and shapes. What matter? Whoa! That's right! How many? Ciao!
That's right. You're a good boy. Go no, sweetie. Go no, you can't go back yet. You got to want some water? Because they are so intelligent and usually live in flocks, African greys need a lot of attention and mental stimuli in captivity to not develop behavioral problems and distress resulting in feather plucking. Social isolation has also been linked to premature aging in greys. Otherwise, if well cared for, the bird can live 40 to 60 years in captivity. The history of African grey parrots date back well over 4,000 years. One early author of the later part of the 1800s, Dr. W. T. Green, wrote several volumes on bird species such as The Grey Parrot and How to Treat It in 1885. He believed this parrot was actually known to the ancient Hebrews some 4,000 years ago. Some Egyptian hieroglyphs depict pet parrots, some possibly being African greys. The ancient Greeks valued parrots as pets as well, and this custom was adopted later by ancient and wealthy Roman families who kept them in ornate cages. The first recorded observance of African greys by Westerners occurred in 1402, when France occupied the Canary Islands and several species had then been introduced. As Portugal's trade relationship with Western Africa developed, more birds were captured and kept as pets in Europe. Portuguese sailors frequently called the grey parrot a jaco due to the sound of their natural cry, and it seems that they were kept on ships as company for long sea voyages. In art, African greys appear in paintings of the 1600s by Peter Paul Rubens, Jan Davids de Heim, and Jan Steen. There are a number of literary citations and other examples of early keepings of the African grey as pets. The wealthy nobility of Europe valued them for their attractiveness and speaking ability. A well-known manuscript by the German naturalist Johann Matthaus Beckstein in his Treatise on Caged Birds, written in 1774, describes the African grey owned by Roman Cardinal Ascanius based on a tale from the Antique Lectiones of Celius Rodiginus, published in Florence in 1516 AD. Ascanius's pet parrot, which he paid a hundred pieces of gold for, that's about 15,000 US dollars nowadays, could recite the Apostles' Creed in an articulate and uninterrupted manner. In the 16th century, Henry VIII of England kept an African grey parrot at Hampton Court, which reportedly amused itself by calling the boatmen from across the water to the palace, who then had to be paid for their efforts crossing the lake. This royal link with African greys continued down the centuries. The oldest surviving example of bird taxidermy is an African grey that can be seen in the Westminster Abbey in London. It was the pet parrot of Frances Theresa Stewart, the Duchess of Lennox and lover of King Charles II. It died in 1702 shortly after its mistress. Queen Victoria kept an African grey called Coco at Sandringham. It was bought for her by Prince Albert just before Christmas 1840. The bird had an English vocabulary of 800 words and could speak several sentences in French. Whenever anyone lifted a wine glass, this bird would hold off its right claw and lustily sing out Her Majesty Queen Victoria's Good Health. Members of the royal family loyally taught the parrot to sing God Save the Queen, apparently much to her amusement. Marie Antoinette, in the late 1700s, had an African grey. George V owned a Congo African grey parrot named Charlotte, just like mine. He obtained her in Port Said, Egypt, when he was a young midshipman in the Royal Navy in the 1880s. Charlotte attended the King's Privy Council meetings. Perched on His Majesty's shoulder as he read through the royal red boxes, the parrot would cast a critical eye over state papers and confidential documents, shouting, what about it? in a high-pitched voice. When the king fell seriously ill, Charlotte spent hours pacing and muttering, where's the captain? During his convalescence, she was the first visitor the king requested. Charlotte flew to his shoulder and danced and bobbed, exclaiming, bless my buttons, bless my buttons, all's well. Prime Minister Churchill kept company with an African grey parrot in the mid to late 30s. According to his daughter, it was quite disagreeable and frequently bit those who tried to curry favor with it. In 1990, the Royal Navy court-martialed their masked African Grey named Lord Nelson. 
Nelson had flown into a fit of rage when Petty Officer Stuart Barry Stone raided Nelson's not ration on board the Portsmouth-based frigate HMS Hermione. Nelson found himself up before the beak before Captain Andrew Rich. He was found guilty, had his wings clipped, and was demoted to the title Able Parrot. African greys continue to sail today as pets on private vessels. A famous African grey named Sunny served aboard a Royal Navy frigate in the early 21st century and frequently used colorful language at inappropriate times. Sunny was actually removed from the wardroom of the Royal Navy frigate in advance of a visit by Queen Elizabeth II. The captain and crew were scared the bird might insult the Queen or Prince Philip. The royal couple would have dined to a backdrop of swear words and catchphrases including arse, bollocks, you ain't seen me right, and Zulus, thousands of them. Sunny, who had her own service number of RN Parrot number one, was taken ashore before the royal visit to HMS Lancaster at Portsmouth in 2004. She later developed a nervous condition and retired to Wales, where she's happy and learning new, less salty words. The undisputed top talker as far as grey parrots are concerned is Prudel, who was rescued as a chick from a nest in a felled tree in Uganda in 1958. Brought to the UK by her owner, she went on to win the title of the country's top talking bird at the National Exhibition of Cage and Aviary Birds for a record 13 years in succession, building up a vocabulary of more than 800 words and retiring undefeated in 1977. Probably the most famous African Grey was Alex, who is deemed the only non-human to ask the existential question, what color am I? He was born in 1976 and became famous for being the subject of a psychological experiment at three universities, including Harvard. He was unique in his ability not only to learn names of individual subjects, but to also identify them by their color and shape. He was purchased at one year old from a pet shop in 1977 by Irene Pepperberg, a scientist and animal psychologist. At the time, her study consisted in testing primates, but she also chose to test the bird for over 30 years. According to Pepperberg, Alex had shown the intelligence of a five-year-old human and the emotional level of a two-year-old. She also argued that the intelligence of Alex compared to one of a dolphin and ape. When asked about a shape, color, or material of a certain object, Alex could give precise description. He was shown a set of keys in different sizes, shapes, and colors, and could identify all easily. When placed in front of a mirror, color. Alex right. inquired the question, what color, same. referring to shape? himself, Good which boy. is the first existential question bigger? ever asked by an animal. You know, what color it bigger? is assumed Come this was simply a lucky and irrational question at the right moment, but some argue otherwise. Alex died suddenly in 2007 at the age of 31, even though he seemed to be in perfect health. How intelligent are African greys? Harvard University's psychology department held an experiment testing Griffin and African grey. It was a classic Piagetin test. Show a child two identical glasses of juice and ask which he or she wants. The child will giggle and say the amounts are the same. You then pour the juice into separate containers, one tall and thin, the other short and squat, and again ask the child to choose. Until about age six, children typically choose a taller container, believing it now holds more. Griffin, by comparison, wasn't thrown off and was even smart enough to see through subsequent tests designed to fool him. We hope you enjoyed this short history of African greys. If you did, please give a like and sub to our channel. More importantly, stay tuned for the history of more species of birds. You may also want to visit our Etsy page for some pretty handmade earrings of birds of around the world. Thank you for encouraging us. Until next time.